Hey friend, this is Mike McCurry, and you're listening to Bible Tract Echoes. Thank you so much for taking of your time and joining me right here today. We will be joined by a special guest right now. In just a moment, you'll be hearing the voice of Dr. Paul Levine. Now, of course, he's the founder of this radio broadcast. He's the founder of the ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated, and every time we play an old message of Dr. Paul's, we hear from folks that so thoroughly enjoy it. I appreciate Dr. Paul's stand for truth. And though he passed away in 1996, he has left big shoes to fill and a long shadow, a good legacy, a goodly heritage. I'm going to ask you to listen as he preached many years back to a congregation that you can tell were itching, were excited to hear from him. They appreciated Dr. Paul as many of you do right now. Listen in as he asks a question. Do you actually believe on Jesus? Well, folks, you know, I'm not used to this kind of business, so I don't have any memorized speech, but I'm just about speechless. Uh, yeah, I'm just overwhelmed at your kindness and the kindness of your pastor and his staff to invite me down here today and, uh, and for this expression of love for the young people and from you people. I just wish I knew how to thank you. I'll think of a whole lot of things that I should have said today. I'll think of it tomorrow on the airplane. And uh, then I'll wish I'd have said, why didn't you say this? And I said, well, you're getting so old, you can't remember things anymore. And I guess that's the reason. But anyway, I just want to thank all of you. And the Lord bless every one of you for your wonderful kindness to me. Uh, by the way, tonight I'm going to be preaching on the subject, how you can sing, how you can learn to sing without taking singing lessons. And so if you uh, always want to be a singer, you be here tonight. And, uh, you know, it's important to take singing lessons if you do sing, so you can learn to use your diaphragm, you know, so you'll know when to die and when to frame and all of that. But uh, if you go to Framen when you're supposed to be dying, you know, you always be in trouble. But tonight, how you can sing without taking singing lessons. Uh, when you talk to me, I just want to say just a couple of things. God's been so good to me. Oh, how good God has been to me down through the years. As you saw in the f picture there, Bob Finley traveled with me for 42 years. And I was a preacher four years before that. And I've been traveling by myself now for five years. So I'm in my 51st year of preaching the gospel. Just think how good God has been to me. And I just want to thank God for his kindness. I uh, want you to pray for me. I've been having troubles with my ears. I guess some of you know that two and a half years ago, I caved in while I was preaching in Marshalltown, Iowa, and they had to haul me off to the intensive ward, and they told me to cancel meetings, and they tried to prove I had a heart attack, but they couldn't prove it. But they told me to go home and cancel meetings and take the stress test, and I took it at home and flunked it. So now when I hit a ball, I don't run to first anymore. I let some fellow that's younger than I am run the first, but outside of that, I haven't slowed down a whole lot. I have less meetings now than I used to have because of this. I don't take as many meetings, but now I've got some trouble with my ears. I'm deaf in the right ear, and I can't hear good out of the left one. Now, the left one has been bothering me for a long time, but now the right one got, uh, got uh, messing around with me, and I had a, what, you, know, you know the fever, fever blisters you get inside of your mouth? Well, I got one on my eardrum. Now, if you're going to have a fever blister, don't have it there. Just decide ahead of time you're not going to have it on your eardrum. That was last November, and for many weeks I was deaf. I went to church, couldn't hear anything, didn't know what was going on. I have a fine church to attend at home, Calvary Baptist Church in Normal, Illinois, and I go there and I didn't know what was going on. I just have to do what other people did. When they'd stand up, I'd stand up. When they'd sit down, I'd sit down. When they'd bow their heads for prayer, I'd bow my head for prayer, and then I had to peek, you know, and see when they raised their heads again. So when they raised their heads, I raised my head, and when they went forward to get saved, I went forward and got saved again. When they went forward to get baptized and joined the church. You know, for about six weeks, I got saved seven times and baptized three times and joined the church four times before I realized what was going on. <laughs> Somebody says, well, why did you go to church if you couldn't hear what was going on? Well, I went because I was supposed to, that's why. And then not only that, I'm a deacon there and they'd fire me if I didn't show up, you know. But I wish you'd pray for this ear trouble. I went to see the doctor Friday before boarding the plane Saturday to make sure it was going to be all right. And before I got out of the doctor's office, he did some surgery on my left ear. And he said, now, he had me flat on my back, and he said, now, hold still. He said, you're going to feel this. He said, I can't deaden it because of your former surgery. I can't deaden this. And I found out he, he sure telling the truth about that. And, boy, I had an awful time on that operating table for, for about 10 minutes. But uh, I think I'm better, and I could, at least I can hear a little better. So thanks much for all your kindness and for your prayers, and God bless you all. See you all again tonight. Open your Bibles, please, to John chapter 6, but don't read it right now. I want to refer to another passage first. John chapter 6. And while you're looking that up, just let me remind you 
of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 22, where Paul said, if, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. I know it's in that song the brethren just sang, and I appreciate all the good music this morning. There's a lot about love in that song. They sang, love so great and wondrous. And uh, what you've done for me is an expression of love. Did you know the Bible says, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema, and that means accursed. That's the same word that Paul used when he said, I say the truth in Christ, I lie not my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow, for I could wish myself accursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. You know what he was saying? He is saying, I love my Jewish people so much I'd be willing to go to hell for them if I could get them saved by me going to hell. It's the same word he used in Galatians 6 when he says, if I or an angel from heaven or anybody else comes and preaches any other gospel to you than the one I preach, let him be accursed. And now he says, if any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed. And then the word Maranatha means the Lord's coming. So what does it mean? It means this, my friend, that if you're not in love with Jesus Christ and you don't really love him, you are in big trouble when he comes back because you're going to be left behind. It could also mean for a Christian that when he comes back again, if you don't love him like you ought to love him and you don't love him like you once did love him, and if you have left your first love, you're in trouble too because you're going to meet him at what we call the beam of judgment or the, or the judgment seat of Christ. So the big question this morning is not, how religious are you? Do you go to church? Are you a Sunday school teacher? Do you sing in the choir? Do you stay out of jail? Do you treat your mother-in-law right? Do you or do you not cheat on your income tax? The big question this morning is, do you love the Lord Jesus? That's it, brother. That's really the test. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, some people love him outwardly. They don't really love him, but they love him outwardly. They act like they love him. You know, you can teach a Sunday school class without loving the Lord Jesus. You can go to church without loving him. You can, you can outwardly put on a show and act like you love him. But the big question is, do you really love him if you don't love him? See? Even though you belong to church, even though you've been baptized, and even though you believe in God and all that, and even though you're a good moral person, if you don't love the Lord Jesus Christ, you are in big trouble. You see, you're not saved because you love him, but you love him because you're saved. And if you don't really love him, that shows you never were saved. Okay, now then let's turn our Bibles quickly to John chapter 6, and um, we're going to read two or three verses here. Somebody says, how am I going to know whether I love the Lord or not? Well, do you love your wife? I'm not going to ask you how many will raise your hands on that, but let me ask you fellows a question. Do you love your wife? Yes. All right, if you love your wife, you like to be with her. If you love your wife, you like for her to talk to you. If you really love your wife, you like to talk to her. Now look, if you really love the Lord Jesus, you'd like to be with him. You'd enjoy his fellowship. You'd like to be with his people. That means you'd like to be in church on Sunday morning. That means something else. You'd like to be back Sunday night. It means you like to be back on Wednesday night prayer meeting. It means you be there every night during revival. It means when the lights are on in the church, you say, man, if I don't get there, I'm going to miss something because that's where the Lord meets with these people, and I want to get there because I enjoy the fellowship with God's people and the Lord. Now, you know if you love him or not. Do you love to go to church? Do you love fellowship with God's people? You, so, you see, if you love the Lord, you like to talk to him. You do that through prayer. If you love the Lord, you like for him to talk to you. He does that through the Bible. Now, if you never pray, and if you never look at a Bible, and you don't enjoy going to church, you better do a little checking. Maybe you've never been saved. Or maybe you have backslidden and left your first love. All right, now look. In this passage of Scripture, in uh, John chapter 6, beginning at verse, uh, let's see, verse, 60, uh, verse 64, we have the story here of two men. One of these men was Judas. Now listen very carefully. Hang on to these the, the few words here now so that you'll still be with me little, later on in the message. Judas did not love the Lord Jesus, but he acted like he did. Then we're also going to read about Simon Peter. Now, Peter did love the Lord Jesus Christ, but on one occasion at least, he acted like he didn't. Now, let's see what the, what, the, what, what the Bible says here. Verse 64, the Lord Jesus says, but there are some of you that believe not. Now, what do you mean by that? To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ is more than believing something about him. You can know all about Jesus Christ and believe everything about him and die in your sins and go to hell. You see, to go to heaven, it's not enough to believe everything you hear about Jesus Christ. You have to believe on him, which is an act of your will, whereby you decide that you're going to take Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, when you receive Jesus Christ, that's believing on him. Now, look what he says here. There are some of you that believe not. In other words, there were some in that crowd there before the Lord Jesus who had never accepted him, never received him, never trusted him. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. You see, he's talking about Judas here. 
And in this crowd was Judas. And the Lord Jesus knew that from the very beginning, Judas never had received him, never trusted him, never taken him as his Lord and Savior. So the Lord says, there are some of you that believe not. Somebody says, you mean to tell me that Judas was not saved? That's right. Well, somebody says, didn't Judas follow the Lord around for over three years? Yes. He not only followed the Lord for three years, he served the Lord for about three years. Uh, he, he was the one who took up the collection in the meetings. He's the one who banked the money. He's the one who wrote the checks. He's the one who kept the books. He's sort of like the treasurer of the crowd. He must have been a CPA. But he served the Lord for three years. But it was all an outward show. Outwardly, he loved the Lord Jesus. But inwardly, he did not. It's like the person that outwardly, you don't know whether they're saved or not. You see, there are some people who are so refined and so educated and, and so mannerly and so well behaved and so kind and so religious and they carry a Bible and you just think they're saved. But they might not be saved at all. On the other hand, there are some born again Christians, really saved people, who are so cantankerous and so easily hurt and, and so out of humor and always mad at somebody and they gossip and they hate and they carry on a warfare all the time, and because of their mean disposition, you don't even think they're saved, but they might be. See, the Lord knows them that are his. We don't always know who's saved and who isn't saved. Now, here's Judas, and Judas outwardly loved the Lord. He followed the Lord, but he wasn't really saved. He's just putting on a show. For example, in the 12th chapter of John, the Lord's in the house of uh, Lazarus and Mary and Martha. And the Bible says that Martha poured some costly ointment, a whole pound. Imagine you girls, you ladies, having a pound of, what, what do they call it, Ch uh, Ch number five. What, Chanel number five, is that it, ladies? Okay, how would you like to have a whole pound of it? See, this, this gal had a whole pound and poured the whole works on the feet of Jesus. And Judas saw that, and he said, huh. And he said, why wasn't that ointment sold? And you could have sold it for a hundred pence and the money given to the poor. Now, you see, he's acting like he loves the poor. He doesn't love the poor. The Bible goes on to add, this he said, not because he loved the poor, but because he was a thief. Now, here's a no good phony who is a thief and a big liar and putting on a big show like he was a Christian and he loved the Lord and he didn't love the Lord at all and neither did he love the poor. Now, I'll tell you what he loved. He loved God. I mean, he loved gold instead of God. Uh, God was his, uh, gold was his God. Wow. Dr. Paul, he had it going on, didn't he? That was a message from about 1980 or so. So about 16 or so years before he passed away. And you're going to want to hear the rest of this message. We'll be playing the remainder of this message over the next few days. So don't tune out. I appreciate so much your listenership to Bible Tract Echoes. And I wonder, is your God gold? Do you love gold or God? Do you love silver or your Savior? I hope you answer that question correctly. My prayer, as always, is that you have a great day for His glory, and we'll hear some more from Dr. Paul Levine in the coming days. God bless. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample booklet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 130, Dwight, Illinois 60420. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.